Could it have been anybody else but Kentucky? Wherever Coach Calipari, John Calipari is coaching it. Like, it's a funny story. Um, I'm watching D. Rose play. I never, like, I seen D. Rose play one time when they played uh, OK on TV. When he was at Simeon High School. Simeon against, and, okay, um, against BJ now. Yeah, and that's when BJ now was undefeated. Yeah. Um, they play Oklahoma in the garden. And I'm like, damn, D. Rose is nice. Like, he played like me. So I was like, all right, that's the school I'm going to. Like, in my mind, since that day forward, that's the school I wanted to go to. But being a kid from Raleigh, North Carolina, like, not expecting to be on this platform, to be one of the best players in the country, uh, to even go number one. I was like, I'm gonna weigh all my options. I'm gonna take all the visits. You know what I mean? You, you wanna go see all the schools, get the gear, see how campus is, and then, but I knew where I wanted to go. So when he uh, made the decision to go to um, Kentucky, it was easy for me. You know what I mean, look, Kentucky got their history of basketball. Uh, I had already took a visit there when um, Billy Gillespie was the coach. I took a visit there and seen the campus, so I already knew what their tradition was. So when he made the jump, I was like, it's easier for me. Yeah. After the All-American games and stuff like that, when you got to campus at, at Kentucky, how did you feel like in the first, you know, how when you get to school, you play pickup, you play with the guys, like, how did you feel when you got there? Did you feel like you was about to have the type of season you was about to have? Yeah, I was never worried about that. <laughs> to be honest, like, I wasn't never worried about that. As long as you give me the basketball and I believe in my ability, I think a couple people from back home was like, oh, he ain't, he ain't gonna do nothing. He gonna do two, three years, four years. And I'm like, my mindset is, I know I'm, I'm probably be one and done. I just wanted to win a championship, but uh, competing against Eric Blesser every day made me get to another level, you know what I mean? Cause he was just as good. And that's somebody that was a late bloomer. Like he never was talked about. And I remember when he committed to Kentucky, everybody was like, I mean, they was like, oh, John Wall might go there. He was like, I don't give a damn. Like shit, I'm going too. And Coach Kyle, I mean, Coach Kyle had told me the story that uh, he bled. Coach asked him like, how you gonna play ball for him? He says, my best, you play your best two players at any time. So. We went out there and competed every day. Like we never was on the same team really in practice until the season got going. So all I had to do was get stronger. I went into college like 165 though, like soaking wet. So I gained like 30 pounds. I ain't missed like no summer lifts or nothing. Yeah. I knew I had to put some weight on to, to play against grown men. But I've yeah. been playing against grown men my whole life. So it was easy to me. Yeah, how, how was it to play with that much talent though? Like I had a squad, like yeah. squad. So, uh, my high school team was loaded too though. Like I had Desmond Wells, Bishop Daniels, CJ Leslie. Like, I had a nice high school team too, but like, Kentucky, I'm playing like with arguably the best big man in the country, DeMarcus Cousin. Uh, Patrick Patterson, one of the best college players coming back. Uh, you had Darius Miller that, when the lights came on, he was a different type of person. So, we had a great team. It was just, I think, some of those guys had played for Billy Gillespie before, so they didn't understand Coach Kyle's mindset and pedigree of how he wanted to play. So, for us to go 35-3, and three, we wanted to win the whole uh, championship, but they were still kind of under Billy Gillespie ropes. So, like, uh, do I be aggressive? Do I not play our game? And then you look at the next year, they kind of got to where they wanted to. How did you feel when uh, I heard Biggie Cuz, uh, Cuzzy say this, that you taught him how to be a pro? Like, even though, you know, you learning it on the fly yourself, did that feel good to just know that you was carrying yourself a certain way, to be a number one pick, to be who you was? Um, I just give all the testimony to my mom. You know what I mean? Like, what she instilled in me, she said, um, I'll always be known as a better person than a better basketball player. And that's something I always, Bleeding, like I know I'm dope at basketball. I got a lot of respect throughout the league and throughout my fans and peers. But um, what I do for myself or carry myself how I do, that's what I believe it for. But uh, I met Boogie at 13. It was funny. We was playing against each other in Nationals and we became close. And then um, he was like, maybe we want to go to college together. And I was like, all right, I'll think about it. You know, he was co committed to UAB. I'm like, bro, I'm not coming to Alabama. <laughs> like, I'm not going there. So uh, funny story, he committed to Kentucky. And um, I called him, like, man, I'm about to commit to Duke. And I hung up, and I didn't answer the phone. Yeah. And he kept calling me, calling me, and I was like, bro, I'm just messing with you, bro. But that's like my brother, like me and me, Bled, we got tattoos, 3A for life, 3 yeah. Amigos. But uh, yeah, bro, it's just, it was so real to understand and see that because just what my mom taught me and raised and just being around certain situations, I knew how to carry myself. And it was, it was, it was difficult, though, going to college, because you like, now you're a rock star. Like, you're playing in front of 24,000 people. You can't walk to class. Every time you turn around, somebody want autographs. Like this whole area right here be full of cars. Yeah. From the lodge, like our lodge would be over there. That we practice here, this whole street full of cars. Yeah. It's like, do you want to sign these autographs? I'm just trying to go to class. It's like negative degrees. I got three sweatsuits on walking to class. Like I'm trying to skip past that. When and how did the, did the John Wall dance originate? Man, for one, like I really like, <laughs> growing up, I used to never dance in front of people like Shy. Yeah. Right. And then um, we go to Midnight Madness, you know, like Dougie, like we all dug in dancing. And DeMarcus was supposed to be the one to dance. But Cal told us like, he was scared of heights. I, mean, he, I don't want to tell y'all, but he's scared of heights. 
But uh, we got on the little drummer trying to go all the way up in Cal. Like, nobody dance, just stand up there. And they dropped the song, and I just had my ear, ear pods in, and I just checked out. <laughs> then it went viral. <laughs> in the league, did you say before you, they announced you, the starting lineup, they was like, man, I'm finna dug you all the way. Nah, <laughs> nah bro. Like, Gil, Gil said I wouldn't do it. Gilbert Arena That might have been bet. your hardest one ever. Gilbert Arena like said I wouldn't. extended version. Gilbert Arena said I wouldn't dance. Yeah. So, you know, he gave me a little friendly wager bet, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> bro, I never, listen, when I saw that, I was like, bro, I think I might even send it to D. Right, like, bro, we dancers, we dancers out here. Like, boy, he is going crazy. <laughs> yeah, I started to come out my shell a little bit, so. It went wild after that.